I'm going to talk uh, today about uh, migration, uh, data migration, and uh, also other validation about uh, your migration with ORA to PG. We're going to, we're going to talk uh, about uh, several things about uh, validation. Uh, the first thing is uh, validation of data type. Uh, validation of uh, all the objects will uh, you will have to uh, you will add to to, uh, to migrate from your Oracle database. The validation of data, which is something new in uh, Aura 2 PG, and uh, the validation of uh, the store procedures, store procedures, which is uh, something uh, which take uh, almost most of the time for the for your migration. Uh, I will not talk about uh, validation, application validation, because uh, this is something uh, big, and uh, it can be a, a conference by itself, so I will not talk about that. Uh, I have uh, no, no time for that. So uh, I have introduced me, but uh, I'm uh, Gilles Darold. I am uh, the author of ORA to PG, and uh, I'm also uh, author of some of the tools like uh, PG Badger, PG Formatter, and uh, et cetera. Uh, I work now with uh, MIGOPS, which is a company that is uh, providing uh, services around uh, PostgreSQL and uh, migration from uh, that uh, other RDBMS to PostgreSQL. So if you want me to work on your migration, uh, please uh, contact uh, MIGOPS. Uh, I will be pleased to, uh, to help you to migrate to PostgreSQL and uh, accessory. It also, uh, it also helps uh, the development of ORA to PG. It's also a celebration time because it's been uh, 20 years now that I start to, to develop ORA to PG. Uh, it started in uh, 2000 uh, with a simple script to migrate data from uh, Oracle to uh, PostgreSQL database, and this script has evolved uh, to, uh, to uh, be a, an application for uh, migrate from Oracle to Postgres. And also now MySQL to, uh, to Postgres. Uh, we are, the first version was uh, in May uh, 2001. The new version is uh, 23 and it's just a few weeks. So this was a lot of work to, to, to be able to have something uh, who cover, which cover all the migration from Iraq to Postgres. And, uh, well, thank you. This is uh, this is almost uh, the, the most uh, complete tool to migrate uh, to uh, from Iraq to post Postgres. Uh, when I start to uh, to develop it uh, in 2000, uh, and I said that uh, Iraq will uh, replace uh, Postgres. Uh, sorry, that Postgres will replace Oracle. Uh, I feel the loneliness. So now everyone wants to migrate to, uh, to Postgres, and uh, I'm happy to, to see that uh, everyone also wants to use ORA to PG. And uh, it is now widely used, and I have a lot of feedback and a lot of work to, to make it, uh, to improve it uh, constantly. So honestly, uh, ORA to PG is not very sexy because uh, it's all at command line. All reports, most of the reports are uh, in text format, and uh, this is uh, there is no graphical interface, so it's not very attractive for the users. But uh, it is pretty good to do what you have to do. So try it. The terminal is not uh, something uh, impossible to to use. So. Let's try it, type some command with uh, ORA to PG and you, you will see uh, how it works. We can uh, block the uh, migration in uh, six steps. Uh, the first step is uh, analysis, the assessment to, to, to know exactly what, uh, 
what kind of effort you, you will have to, to include in your, uh, in your migration. This is a deep analysis. Uh, ORA 2PG is pretty good to, to give you uh, uh, an assessment. You will have um, the number of the that it estimate for to for your migration, but uh, it also always need uh, the point of view, a human point of view, because uh, ORA 2PG is a program, so it's pretty mechanics uh, for is analyze. So you you will have to uh, to to have a look to the report and see if uh, if there is something that. Uh, is false positive or uh, is underestimated by a RATU PG. This is especially true uh, if you have, for example, one package, uh, one ORAN package which is used in several schema. RATU PG will give you uh, a number of day for each uh, rep repeated uh, uh, package in each schema, which is a, a count that is false because uh, you will just uh, transform it, uh, translate it uh, one time, so you, you will have to, to do that uh, by, uh, by yourself to adjust the, the, the analysis of uh, ORA to PG. The migration, uh, honestly, uh, ORA to PG is pretty good to migrate every object. Uh, from your ORAC database, uh, Chima data, uh, store procedures. There is still uh, manual work to be done on store procedure, but uh, this is a, a good startup. Uh, and most of, of the code is, uh, is translated. And uh, of course, the application, uh, you, there is a, always some work to, to do at the application side. Testing, uh, this is uh, the most important part of the migration. Uh, this is uh, what we're going to talk uh, uh, today. Uh, you must uh, test the migration by itself, but also all uh, all of the workflow you have in, uh, with your database, like uh, the batches uh, and uh, some of the part of your uh, architecture. Performances, which uh, usually uh, it's pretty good for performance when you migrate to Postgres because uh, there is some, uh, some uh, very good feature in Postgres, but uh, it happens that some, uh, some parts are, uh, are slow in Postgres and must be rewritten. So you will have to, to have a look to this. Training, uh, people uh, are uh, trained to, to work with the Oracle or the DMS, so they are have also to be trained to, to Postgres. And support, of course, this is a database. Uh, if you use it in progression, you, you, may, have, uh, you may need uh, support for your database. So testing is, uh, is a key uh, of the success for your migration. This is um, most of the time for your migration you will, will be spent in testing. And you have to test and test again. This is uh, necessary for uh, to, to be sure that everything is uh, like uh, is running like uh, you you are expecting. Uh, I guess there is a unitary test already, but uh, most of the time uh, it's a it's a good uh, it's it's a good practice to uh, to take the, the migration or, and. Uh, create some new new unitary test. And what is also some things that must be tested is the switch over to production. Uh, just one test is not enough. You, you have to test it several times to be sure that uh, everything will go in the right way when, we, when you will switch to, to production, sorry. I forget to say that there is two things that have not changed uh, in 20 years for RATU-PG. Uh, this is uh, Perl. It is still written in Perl. The code uh, used uh, uh, in 2000 is all already working, so I have no, no uh, 
decision to, to rewrite it in another language. And the other thing that has not evolved is my English, so sorry for that, and I apologize. <laughs> So we, we, we have uh, some uh, feature in Aura 2 pg to test uh, object. object. Almost all objects in Aura 2 pg uh, uh, all objects uh, migrated by Aura 2 pg um, are something uh, from the standard, uh, SQL standard. So there is no problem uh, to migrate uh, any object like uh, type, uh, sequences, table index, constraints, etc. Everything can be migrated by Aura to PG, and uh, the only uh, part which, which is uh, some different between Oracle and Postgres are package. Uh, package are exported as schema into Postgres, which allow to create uh, the function inside this, uh, this uh, schema, which uh, allow us to, to call the function with the prefix uh, of the package name. DB links to, uh, in PostgreSQL, uh, we have two, uh, two possibilities for DB links. Uh, there is DB links itself, which is an extension, which allow to, to communicate with another PostgreSQL uh, database. But uh, most of the time in the migration, uh, you have to, uh, to communicate with another uh, ORAC database that is not already migrated. So in the new Postgres uh, uh, database, you will have to communicate with it. And uh, for that, uh, we have the Oracle, uh, Oracle for Ang Data Wrapper, which is an extension to, to allow to communicate with, uh, with Oracle. Synonyms also are something uh, re really uh, usual on Oracle, but there is no equivalent in, uh, in PostgreSQL. So most of the time they are not migrated because it corresponds to something that does not exist. But uh, we can, if there's a need to be migrated, we can use view instead of uh, synonyms to, to emulate the synonyms. This is quite the same thing. Huh? Most of the time synonyms are used to access to another part of the or to another schema of the database to see to, to, to hide to the user the, the, the pass to the, to the object. So you are, are done for that. So this is not problematic. Uh, there is also another part which is uh, jobs. There is no such object in, uh, in Postgres. So there is some extensions that allow to, uh, to create jobs like uh, PG cron. There is also uh, PG agent. And uh, now there is a new, also a new uh, PG cron and PG agent are uh, something uh, useful for like to to have some uh, scheduling like uh, cron, uh, cron. But uh, PG there is a new extension which is called DB, uh, PG DBMS job, which is uh, equivalent to uh, to the DBMS job uh, module, which uh, allow to to run a synchronous job and uh, to schedule jobs uh, just uh, like the, the Oracle uh, module. So. Uh, another part uh, important is to validate all your data type when you migrate uh, the, the table from uh, Oracle. There is no uh, no easy way to, uh, to do that un unless uh, trying to, to import uh, all the data into, uh, into Postgres, all or a part of the data, which uh, will return an error if you are, uh, have the wrong uh, data type. This is uh, possible with, uh, with Postgres, uh, with Aura 2 PG to load a part of the data. So you can choose to import, uh, let's say, uh, uh, 2,000 uh, or uh, 100,000 of a row into Postgres to validate that uh, you have uh, the right data type. If you have uh, an error, uh, you have to, to look what is the problem. Most of the time, uh, the problem comes from uh, the begin to numeric transformation. 
Uh, actually, in, um, in Oracle, there is a data type which is called number, which correspond to uh, integer begin or to numeric if there is a precision or scale. Uh, most uh, of the tool are, um, for, for reasons, I guess, are uh, migrating uh, those numbers with, without precision into numeric, which allow to import the data without error. The problem is, uh, is that if you have uh, most of the, of the primary key are uh, numbers, and if you uh, transform this into numeric, you will have a performance issue. So the choice of Aura to PG is to, uh, to import them as begins. So if this is a real uh, numeric data field, uh, data uh, column, you will, uh, you will have uh, an error when you insert uh, a number with, uh, with a decimal. So this will uh, allow you to detect the, the data types that need to be ch changed. Uh, the raw data type is a special uh, thing in Oracle, and uh, especially the raw with a uh, precision of, of uh, 16 and uh, 32, uh, which can be translated into UID in, uh, in uh, PostgreSQL. And Ora2PG will, will do that now automatically, so normally you, you will not have an uh, issue uh, with this import, but. Uh, Data import can uh, can uh, can be used to uh, to detect if this is really a raw uh, a raw data type that is not uh, that that doesn't need to be translated into UID. Translation to Boolean too, with Aura to PG you can tell, let's say uh, any uh, car one or var car one uh, will be translated into Boolean uh, because in Oracle uh, Boolean doesn't exist so. You, most of the time, you have a column car one, car one with a yes or no inside it. So, Aura to PG is able to make the transformation and trans translate it, it into Boolean. So, during the data import, you will be uh, sure that everything will be trans translated into uh, zero to one and not something else. Uh, Colon Vacar also uh, in some uh, with some um, encoding you you could have some problem because uh, the length uh, the maximum length of your Vacar will uh, will be too uh, too small and uh, when you will answer data it will uh, it will make an error so you will have to increase so that the length limit. As a special case about uh, data enticement, actually, uh, when you will import data, we will, will, will not have any problem. So this is something that will really be tested at, uh, at application side. Or the problem is that uh, Oracle is uh, storing date uh, with the timestamp internally. So when you uh, export the data, uh, ra 2 pg uh, will uh, transform it into timestamp. But in your application, maybe you just have uh, the date, so we, you will have to uh, to to change the output to to just uh, get uh, the the date. So you can also uh, make an alter colon to to change uh, the data type to to that. So in Aura to PG, now you have uh, some uh, some action that can be used to to test uh, to validate your data. There is uh, the test action, which allow you to uh, to run uh, several tests in the in the PostgreSQL database, and the RAC for uh, to be compared with uh, the RAC uh, database. There is uh, typically two connections, one on the RAC database and the second on the PostgreSQL database, and then each object uh, are count and uh, compare. And if there is some difference, you will have some uh, error reported. The count of objects are tables, so you will compare if we have the same number of tables uh, into Oracle and into Postgres. Trigger view sequence, it also checks the last value for seconds. 
to be sure that you, you will start at the same uh, value when you, you will start pos your progress in, uh, in production. User data type. If all of your user data type have been exported or not. Uh, external tal table. Uh, in ORAC, external tal uh, the files. Uh, ORAC 2 PG export them uh, into uh, into external uh, foreign table with a file uh, foreign data wrapper. And uh, ORA 2PG also count the number of function, whatever is, uh, if they are in a package or not. So package uh, function and procedure from a package are, uh, are count and uh, reported. There is also a count per table. Uh, this count per table uh, concerns uh, indexes, uh, unique constraint, primary case. So it, it will count each object, each uh, constraint, uh, indexes, uh, the, the null constraints too, and the default value to be sure that you, are, you have exactly the same in Oracle and in Postgres. Identity column to our, our scans. Uh, Trigger, partition, everything uh, is counted. So normally, after uh, running a test, you will have uh, an exact uh, report to the count of object you have in Oracle and uh, the one you have in Postgres. So if there is a difference, you have missed something in your export. I have some, some example. Uh, I think I will not click on the link because maybe I will lose the focus. So let's say uh, at the end, if, uh, if we have time, I will show you. Uh, but this is something, uh, a text report, so it's not really uh, pleasant. But uh, what we want to know if is Oracle Postgres the number of, uh, of object, the count, and if there is an error point uh, the, the, the table or the object which is in, a, in error. You have also uh, an option to, con to count the number of a row. Uh, during the test action, uh, you can add uh, the, the moment, uh, minus minus uh, count row to, uh, to enable the count of a row in each table. So each time, uh, or at OPG will, uh, will scan an ORAC table and a Postgres table. It will count the row and uh, make a difference to see if there is a program, problem. There is also, because this is useful to, to use the option minus minus control when you first run the test action. But after that, if you have made some modification and re import the data, uh, you have now uh, a new test count uh, action which only count the row in each table. So we, you will not uh, uh, do the, the, the object count again. Here is an example. Test row count, so you have the oracle. The first link is the oracle uh, report. Uh, from table actor with 200 uh, lines. And the second link is the Postgres on table actor, which have been migrated with also 200 lines. So here everything uh, goes well. So we have the same number of line, of line in, each, uh, in each table. At the bottom of the, of the screen, you have the error row count, which is uh, the error part. If there is a, uh, if ORA 2 pg detect any error uh, in, the, in the row count for the table, it will report the, the name of the table where the count is different and gives a different. So this is useful when you have a hundred of table uh, instead of uh, listing everything. There is also an option to test view. Uh, this option is uh, only to count the number of a row written by the view, not the, 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 the data written by the view. The, 
the problem uh, to to uh, to test uh, to compare the data is to have a, a view that is ordering the data, uh, which uh, we don't know when we run the, the view. So this part, uh, I think, uh, Ratu PG can detect if uh, the if the view can uh, as an order by uh, clause uh, in the in its definition, but. Uh, we also have to detect if the, the column is, uh, is has the right correlation, so it's pretty complicated to uh, to know exactly uh, if uh, if they will report the, the exact same uh, data. But for the moment, it only uh, reports the the the, the, punt, the, the raw return by the by the view. So you will need to run test at application level to be sure that uh, the view reports the exact same data for the moment. An example of uh, of view uh, an analysis. So this is the same. You have the, the Oracle line and the PostgreSQL line with uh, the, t the name of the view and the and the number of or line return. If you have an error, you, are, you will have, have the, at the end of the report the, the error and the, the view concerned by the error. Here, everything goes well. The test of data, this is something new in, in the new uh, version of ORA 2 pg uh, which is uh, the 23. Before uh, testing the data, uh, what you have to, to be, uh, uh, you have to, to do is to, uh, to be sure of the time, uh, the, the migration time that it will take to migrate all your data. Uh, this is important to know the, the cutoff for, uh, of the production time. Uh, you, will, you will need to, to migrate, so. Import all your data. You, you have several options to uh, to run uh, the data migration in, in parallel or in multi-process, which allow you to to test at what speed you can export all your data uh, to to Postgres. You have the minus uh, uh, upper, uh, upper P, uh, which uh, will export data in parallel from uh, from tables. So you will have. Uh, let's say, uh, four tables in parallel to, to be exported. The minus G, um, the minus G, yes, this is the number of um, process to, to write to Postgres. And the minus uh, uppercase G is uh, the number of Oracle pop, uh, process for one table. So you can, uh, especially if you have a, a big table with a lot of bellobs, uh, you can use uh, the menu super G to, uh, to export the data at, uh, at high speed. So with uh, using uh, all these, um, these options, you can uh, see at what speed you can, uh, you can export the data. Take care that uh, this is this um, option uh, uh, use uh, a lot of uh, uh, CPU, so to take care of that when you run it, you can uh, you can have some problem. There is also now uh, the use of Oracle foreign data wrapper to export the data, which is uh, very important when you are exporting uh, BLOBs, because uh, until uh, until now, Oracle PG uh, use. Uh, an eternal uh, escapement to, to transform a BLOB into byte, which has some cost because uh, it's done in Perl. So it, it's not very really performant, so we have to parallelize a maximum to, to have some speed. But now uh, we can use uh, the foreign data wrapper, uh, ORAC uh, FDW, to, uh, to migrate uh, tables with BLOBs. And uh, with the uh, addition of the the minus uh, upper G um, 
you have now the, the maximum of speed. This is really impressive, uh, the gain of time to export tables with, with Belob, uh, with uh, the rack uh, foreign data wrapper. There is also, after loading the data, there is also the creation of, uh, of the index and, and constraint. Uh, if you run uh, the, the creation uh, in a single process, it will take a lot of time, uh, especially if you have a lot of data. So you can, uh, with ORA 2 PG, uh, give all the creation uh, DDL, uh, index creation and, and constraint creation, into a file and uh, use uh, action load to, uh, to import everything with uh, the number of process you want to, to parallelize. So uh, it, it is very uh, useful and you have to, to abuse uh, of this action to, uh, to parallelize uh, the creation of an index. So uh, Postgres also now have uh, internal uh, parallelization for index creation, so it helps to you must also consider to, uh, if you have a terabyte of data, this is problematic to, uh, to load, to import all data uh, when you want to switch in production. So you must consider the data that are, the, that are arch archived or the, and the data that are necessary to, to start the production immediately. So best is to separate uh, the arch archived data, the dead data, that you can import uh, either before or either after the, the switch to production, and uh, it will, it will uh, shorten the, the, the cutoff window. With all of these options and the rack for an, for an data wrapper, I don't think you, you can find a tool that can import uh, the data uh, at uh, the, big, uh, the higher speeds on ORA to PG. You can try uh, with any uh, TL on uh, anything you want. Uh, ORA to PG is now the, the best tool to, to import your data. It needs some training to, to, to find the right uh, tuning to, to import the data. But, uh, it's really impressive. About data validation, uh, there is so uh, an action which is called uh, test data, uh, which is used to check uh, all values written by uh, Oracle and Postgres. They are extracted uh, from the two RDBMS to uh, and compare uh, one by one. If there is a difference, you will have a notification. So. It, basically, it uses a foreign data wrapper uh, to, to compare because the point is uh, with foreign data wrapper, uh, ORAC uh, foreign data wrapper is already transform, transforming the data exported from ORAC, so we can compare it with, uh, with Postgres directly. But uh, you can also use uh, the, the, the RATU-PG connection, direct connection to ORAC to, to compare the data. You don't need to, to have the, the, the foreign data wrapper installed. You can also use a where clause to limit the number of uh, data uh, you want to, to test. Or if you have imported uh, only a part of the data with a where clause, you can use it too with uh, the test data. How it works? The principle is, is you have uh, ORA to PG, which is connected to Oracle, to the Oracle instance. This instance can be uh, on, a, on a local server or on the cloud or on Exadata, for, for example. And you can uh, connect the other part of ORA to PG to uh, the PostgreSQL uh, destination database. And everything will be uh, extracted by ORA to PG and compared inside ORA to PG. There is some, some limitation uh, and uh, some prerequisite for uh, running this, uh, this test. 
you have to make sure that you have uh, the, the corresponding data type, data type between ORAC and Postgres. You cannot uh, create your own table on Postgres with your own data type and uh, wish that everything will, will go well with, uh, with this test. So you have, the, you have to create the, t the data types that match between ORAC and Postgres if you don't use the RATU-PG. RATU-PG will, uh, will use the, the correct uh, data type. You also need uh, to have a primary key on, uh, on the table uh, to, to be uh, checked. Uh, with this, uh, this primary key or unique index is used to, uh, to, to apply an order by uh, clause, uh, which is important to, to be able to, to compare the same things between the two uh, databases. This can be avoided if you uh, if you have imported uh, if you this is just the fourth time you have imported the data in Seagull uh, in Seagull process because in PostgreSQL when you import the data they are uh, in the same order than uh, the one in uh, in Oracle but once there is a modification is a, the order will not be the same so we need another by clause. The collation, also, if you have a non-numeric uh, key, uh, primary key uh, on this table, uh, it has to be uh, the, to have the collection C uh, in, in PostgreSQL to, to have the right, uh, uh, to have the same uh, sort of, uh, and of course, uh, you will, there must be no modification of the data. The data validation uh, will be, uh, exported to a file which is called uh, data validation point dot log. Uh, that is, it is stored in the current directory, but you, you can change uh, see also the output directory with uh, the minus B uh, option. By default, it, it reports uh, 10 errors and stop to, uh, to compile the data. Uh, there is, this is a nonsense to continue to, uh, to, to scan the table if there is a, a certain a number of errors. So 10 is the default. You can adjust this with a parameter. But after 10 errors, uh, ORA to PG will switch to the next table. And uh, data validation, yes, can be, uh, can be parallelized uh, using the, the minus P uh, option, which is useful to, uh, if you have a lot of, uh, of table and uh, you want to compare a lot of data. By default, uh, RATU-PG will, uh, will scan uh, uh, 10,000 of rows per, per table, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's enough to, to be able to see if there is a problem, but uh, you can also uh, change this uh, and force RATU-PG to scan all, uh, all options, all uh, rows, uh, with this uh, configuration directive to, to, to control this is called data validation rows. You have also uh, one directive which is called FDW server, which uh, allows you to uh, give a name to the foreign data wrapper you want to use, uh, foreign server you want to use. You don't have to create it, it uh, will be created uh, directly by, uh, by ORA2PG if you set a name to this uh, directive. PG DSM is to, to set the, the communication to, to Postgres. And I told you about uh, the 10 uh, error by default. Uh, it can be controlled too by a, a di configuration directive which is called data valid validation error where you can set to uh, 100 if you want. Parallel tables, yes. Um, in regards to the sampling to 10,000 rows, is that random or is it no. sequential? This is sequential. Uh, okay. Is it, it is in the order of the select, with the order by, uh, so in uh, ascendant. Uh, I have planned to add uh, 10,000 rows uh, ascendant and 10,000 rows descendant. Uh, I think it's enough to, to have something, uh, but we cannot 
use a sample, uh, sample table from Oracle and uh, Postgres, I don't think they will report the exact same, uh, exact same role. So. Yeah, you don't have an algorithm for ordering randomly samples. Yeah. This is the reason. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Also, with the FDW approach, you would want to uh, kind of avoid uh, like taking the data from Oracle and Postgres and then doing that in a separate box. Rather, you're trying to do only a pull and compare. So that's kind of a reduction in terms of like it improves the performance of validation and migration too, right? Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. So parallel uh, uh, tables, this is uh, the minus uh, P option which allow you to, uh, to compare uh, multiple tables at the same time. It will, you will get, gain time. Uh, data validation or ordering, this is uh, the configuration directives that allow you to uh, enable or disable the, uh, the order by clause in, uh, in the select. Uh, so if you have uh, imported all the data the first time and there is no modification, uh, the data are in the same order. So you will be able to scan uh, any table without the order, uh, a primary key and without uh, the need of, uh, of another back clause so, because uh, data are in the same order of the select. But uh, it needs to, uh, to have been imported in a single uh, process because if you have multi-process, uh, the same, so the, the, the row will, will be mixed. Uh, so in this case, you can use uh, data validation ordering set to zero and uh, it will scan uh, all the table whatever if, the, if it has a primary key or, or not. The limits for uh, the data validation, so you, you can only run data validation schema by schema. You, you cannot have multiple schema from a rack compared to multiple schema scan in PG. Uh, this is not possible. You have to, 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 to choose one schema by one schema to uh, one schema to uh, to be able to, to run the test. There is a, actually a limitation with a user, user defined data type. You cannot compare a, a table which have a user defined data type uh, because uh, the rack foreign data wrapper does not allow it. Uh, this is a limitation, but uh, I'm working on uh, a solution with a direct connection to, to be able to compare uh, both, um, both table with, uh, with uh, user defined data type. Same for the partition, you cannot uh, work uh, partition by partition, which uh, is a bit uh, limited, limited because uh, if you export only 10,000 of row from a partition table, you, you will probably have a, a very f not a representative uh, sample. So. And there is no data validation for, for view. Ora to PG all, all you to, to change the structure between uh, the ORAC database and the Postgres database. So when you export your, uh, your uh, object from the ORAC database, uh, you can also report the same change when you, you, you will run the, the test. So you can uh, rename the schema, you can uh, rename a table, you can uh, rename columns, you can uh, drop columns in between uh, ORAC and Postgres. Everything will be, uh, all the information will be stored in the uh, ORAC, ORA2PG.conf, which is uh, the configuration file. Here, is, here are the, the configuration directive used to, to, to perform this, this action. So it's pretty uh, simple to uh, configure a, a structure change between Oracle to Postgres in Aura to PG. If you uh, want to compare the data, uh, you have to, 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 uh, to have the same configuration files that you, you used when you migrate the object. So and everything will, uh, will go fine. Okay. 
you can try to do this with uh, other tools that uh, allow migration uh, of uh, ORAC to Postgres. Most of the time, you will spend a lot of time to, to try to configure a, a JSON file or something like that to, uh, to try to, to uh, define the transformation you want between ORAC and Postgres. But uh, with uh, ORAC to PG, this is very simple. This is not very uh, modern. Well, this is pretty old. Uh, this is a, a simple text file, but uh, it works f uh, pretty well. So. Same if you have a, a data tip uh, transformation, like uh, transform some uh, columns into Boolean or some uh, tips into Booleans, or you have some configuration directives that allow you to, to change uh, the data type uh, between Oracle and Postgres. For replaces Boolean, so you can just give a car one and uh, any uh, column defined in car one will, will be transformed in Boolean into Postgres. And the data stored into this, uh, this column will be also transformed into Boolean. You can also remap some data type like uh, the date, the date uh, uh, data, type, data type, which is exported in uh, in uh, in timestamp. Just you, you just set uh, that uh, to that, and you will have uh, a that uh, data type in Postgres. Store procedures. Uh, this is uh, probably m most of the time, uh, I already say that. Postgres uh, only checks uh, the, the, your store procedure at execution time. So you will see the error only when you will execute the, the, the store procedure. So it's uh, good to, um, to run uh, an extension which is called PL, uh, PGSQL uh, check which uh, analyzes the uh, code in your stop procedures and uh, you will have something uh, more uh, sure to, to be executed on, on Postgres. There is some other side, but uh, I'm thinking. Uh, okay. You said before that uh, Aura to PG was the fastest way to move data, right, if I understood it correctly. How fast is it today? So assuming that I have two systems on the same backplane, so there's no network effect, how fast can I move data from Aura to PG today? Uh, it really depends on the... Actually, uh, I used to say that you can migrate uh, before the, the ORAC Frank Data Wrapper integration. Uh, you can migrate uh, 100 uh, gigabytes of data in one hour. Uh, actually, with the Frank Data Wrapper, most of the, the data by size uh, are uh, bellows. Uh, this is why I talk about uh, uh, this part. Uh, with our ORAC uh, frank data wrapper. Uh, for other, uh, other data types, this is not problematic. This is uh, as fast as possible. But for uh, the bailouts to byte uh, with the frank data wrapper, no, I think the, the 100 of gigabyte, you can uh, migrate this in, uh, in 20 minutes, something like that. Yeah, Thank this you. is uh, really, uh, really fast. And uh, if you, the more you can parallelize, if you, if you can, can use uh, 32, uh, 32 uh, CPU to, uh, to execute uh, RATU-PG, then you can uh, split the data into uh, 32 process, and uh, it will be very, very fast. Yeah. It depends on your uh, server when you run uh, RATU-PG. Uh, <clears throat> uh, my question concerns uh, uh, PL PGSQL or um, PL uh, PL SQL uh, 
modules that you're converting, a lot of times they have uh, collections in them, like PL SQL tables, which are in memory things. Is there anything in yeah. Aura to PG to handle those? And if so, how do you do it? No, Aura to PG don't have this uh, information when he pass um, uh, the PL SQL uh, file only you have the information about the other pros, uh, store procedures that exist, so you can replace them, their core in the store procedure. Uh, but for tables, no. This is uh, why I recommend to, to run PL, uh, P, PSQL check, because uh, it will check uh, that all your calls in the, in the translated uh, code uh, correspond to existing objects. So. If you found some code that uh, call an unexistent uh, table, it will give you a warning, tell you uh, this call, uh, the table is missing or the function is missing or something like that. Okay, any more questions? This is a strange question uh, because someone asked, right? They have two copies of the same Postgres database and they're trying to figure out the difference between the data. Is there a way of doing it? Because you're validating from Oracle to Postgres. I'm just wondering if there's a way to do it for more databases. To load data in two different databases? No, no. For some reason, they have another copy of the same Postgres database and they're trying to diff the data. Not the structure, but the difference in the data. Between two Postgres databases? Yeah. <laughs> no, Aura to PG uh, doesn't compare to, to Postgres. Uh, it could be done, but uh, this is not the, uh, yeah. the goal of, of Aura to PG. For what it's worth, um, I had a bit of a puzzle, the same as you. And what I ended up doing was I would use the same exact query, but then I'd generate the. Okay, so let's suppose you have two databases or two tables, execute a query, the same query in order, but instead of outputting the data, throw it through an MD checksum and just compare that. Yeah. You can use a simple script, uh, a Perl script to, uh, to do the, the thing. You, you just connect the two to uh, handle to, uh, the two databases and make a checksum for each row and compare it. This is, Pretty easy to do. Uh, uh, yes, it will take time. Yeah. You want to uh, to use uh, parallelism from Aura to PG? Yeah. It could it could be. Uh, this I think this is not complicated to do because I have uh, I I can do that with MySQL and Oracle. And there is a possibility to do that with uh, all the uh, SGBD, so it just needs to be implemented. But uh, maybe there is already tools that do that. Uh, we, I know we are, we are also working on some tools that can count uh, rows and compare rows uh, independently from, uh, from ORA to PG, so maybe. Yeah. yeah, I think in the interest of time for the next speaker, like we will. Sorry. Uh, Try to stop the questions maybe here, but uh, thanks for your passion. Thank you, thank you so much. It was a great talk. <laughs>